nations, tackling the planet's biggest problems from financial crises to military conflicts. But it's also the G8 minus Russia. And it seems they just can't help talking about the member they kicked out. Russia was the focus of the G7 foreign and security ministers' meetings in Toronto. The G7 foreign ministers are calling attention to so-called malign behavior by Russia. They're expected to look at ways to keep pressure on Russia without imposing new sanctions. For two days, G7 foreign and security ministers rubbed shoulders in Toronto at an event with the tagline, Building a More Peaceful and Secure World. And apparently for that to happen, first and foremost, Russia needs to be put in its place. Then things like war and world hunger can be addressed, just like last year and the year before that, and so on. The crisis in Ukraine and Russia's actions are the very reason for the G7 Brussels summit. This is now the second year in a row that the G7 has met without Russia. Another example of Russia's isolation. Ukraine is the victim of Russian-backed aggression. We must never forget that fact. If I think about the position of, uh, of Vladimir Putin now, he's, you know, he's toxifying his rep the reputation of, of Russia. Now, this time around, it included a whole laundry list of Russia issues. Condemn Russia's irresponsible and destabilizing behavior? Check. Demand such alleged actions cease immediately? Check. Agree that it is highly likely Moscow poisoned Sergei Skripal and his daughter, and that there's just no plausible alternative? Check. And the acting U.S. Secretary of State went as far as to tell reporters that Russia has to be a, quote, constructive partner in Syria or be held accountable. So, to be fair, they did manage to cover a lot of ground. It just more often than not happened to be Russia-related. Let's just hope they can avoid getting too carried away with their plans. What we decided was that we were going to set up a G7 group that would look at Russian malign behavior in all its manifestations, whether it's cyber war, whether it's disinformation, assassination attempts, whatever it happens to be, and collectively try and call it out. And the hostility may not have reached its peak either. This meeting was perhaps just a preview of what we can expect when the leaders of the G7 countries 